So I've never been on camera before, Loza. No? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so we're gonna f***ing roll, but go do whatever it takes. Really? You've been on, I'm sure you've been on <laughs> No, dude. He's always behind I'm, the I'm camera. I'm always behind the thing, dude. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I always make other people do it. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us today. We're standing here with Fire to f***ed it up. Yeah, <laughs> right, you're doing right great, you're doing great. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. I'm Jake from Yakima Valley Hops. And I'm Kelly from Yakima Valley Hops. I'm Junior Loza from Loza Farms here in the Yakima Valley. And uh, Loza's gonna show us today how to plant some rhizomes. Most of the rhizomes that uh, we sell on Yakima Valley Hops is uh, right from Loza's fields here. And so uh, we thought it'd be best that we came out here today and uh, have the man himself show us how to do it. So we're gonna get right to it. All right, so today I'm gonna show Kelly how to plant. She's never planted rhizomes before. And so we'll kind of go through the process of what we think we're gonna do. Uh, the first thing is you gotta figure out where you're gonna wanna plant them. Uh, hops like plenty of sunlight. Uh, a farmer around here told us, we always say, say that hops like uh, uh, dry heads and wet wet feet. So you wanna make sure you plant them where, where the weather isn't going to be an issue, but we're still getting plenty of sunlight and where you can irrigate irrigate them properly. So the first way we start is the way I prepare the ground is I always remove the top part of the of the soil. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll loosen the soil up. So I dig down and I just turn it over. Make sure I break it all up. And then if you want to grab the rhizomes. Sure. So what you want to do is when you're going to plant them, is you want to have them, you want to plant them spread out a little bit so they're not too close together and you want to make sure that these nodes are pointing up that's where your plants are going to start coming out from so you want to make sure they're planting up so once I'm, i tell you you're going to put them in like this in the ground okay and then you can and let how them many go. rhizomes do we have here so right here we have four so i like to do three to five when we're out here in the field i mean you always have the issues of some of them might die i mean not everything's going to come out but also you have to think is every one of these is going to throw out little vines and so the more you have in there to throw vines the bigger best better your plants can look the very first year and so here on the farm we always do three to five uh rhizomes per per hill and then if we need to we might come back and do a transplant where we put pots and stuff like that which you can also use the same ones to make pots and you can put them in a little pot and get them started that way you actually have a little plant when you when you put them in the ground that's a different way to do it especially if you're in a colder climate where you can't plant as as uh, early as we do so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dig down and I'll pull the soil back. And so if you wanna just slide them in there and kind of spread them out a little bit. Yeah, and so I'll, I'll loosen the soil and I'll go back here. And all I'm doing right here is just making sure the air is out. Making sure the air is out. Yeah, so okay. so if there's too much air trapped in there, you, you'll have a tendency that they'll rot on you. And that's pretty much all you have to do. Okay. And we don't irrigate here until after May 10th. It's just when we get our water. We have enough soil moisture in the ground that they'll actually start to grow without it. If you add water too early, you can have a chance of them rotting also. And how much water were we talking once it's summertime and the heat's going? And... So, so every soil is going to be different. Uh, we use drip here when we irrigate. And uh, I irrigate a total of four hours uh, a day. Okay. But I do a pulse irrigation, so I only do one hour at a time. It just depends on your soil. You just have to watch it and uh, keep track of it. Make sure that it's, you're not too wet. You're not too dry, obviously. So every place, the soil is going to be a little bit different. You can see how much moisture I have in my soil now. How early it is. It's enough moisture where it actually clumps up already. And so for that reason, the way, the way we plant here is the reason why we pull out the air and we don't actually step on them. There's other places where you'll see, instead of using the shovel, they'll step sideways to make sure all the air is out. But for us, this is what we, we have noticed that works the best here. And mostly just because of our soil type. Every place where you plant is gonna be slightly different. In some places, it'll be a lot more difficult for you to have a crop that grows. And so you wanna make sure you try different varieties and try different places, you know? Uh, best way to learn is uh, fail one time and then try to get in a different spot. That's the only thing you can do pretty much. Would you recommend that people start in pots or if they're in a warmer climate, say like down in California or Arizona and warmer places, they can go ahead and start doing them now? It's just like any other plant. I mean, obviously the, the earlier you can start on them, the better. And you might still have a chance that where you can have a, a, a hard freeze and, and your plants could die. So by starting them indoors, you might have a better chance of them starting. Mm -hmm. The difference there is now, now you're talking about pots is 
usually when you put a pot, especially if you put a pot in one spot, like if I was planting this field right now, I was putting pots, I would only put one to two pots per per hill. And each pot usually only has one rhizome in it. So I have noticed, at least here for us, that we get a better crop if we do rhizomes than if we do pots. Okay. Usually when we do pots, it's either weather or there's not enough plant material to, to get the plants that we want. Most of the time, we, we try to always do rhizomes first. It works better for us here. Okay, so, so we try to harvest rhizomes after, after the last, uh, when all the snowfall is gone, you know, when our plant is still dormant, but it's starting to come back to life. So we are actually harvesting rhizomes now, um, and we don't harvest rhizomes on first year or second year crops. We wait till at least a third year before we pull in rhizomes. The plant isn't as strong yet. And so you don't want to weaken it more by taking cuttings off of it. Um, but after that, we'll, we take, we'll take cuttings. I mean, you can take cuttings every year on certain plants and still get plenty of rhizomes back. Different plants throw different rhizomes, which is why if you get cascade rhizomes, they might look different than your centennial rhizomes. My centennial rhizomes seem to be more of a slip root rhizome where it's a lot thinner, a lot nicer rhizome than the cascade ones. And so, just because one rhizome looks one way, another rhizome looks a different way, doesn't mean that one is better than the other. It's just different plants mm -hmm. make different rhizomes. So, so tell us like what people can expect for the first year, second year, third year growth. All right, so first year, it depends where you're at. There's very few places that you actually get a crop the first year. Uh, Yakima Valley is one of those places, and even us, we don't get a full crop. Uh, we're looking like 50 to 60% usually crop the first year. Uh, most places won't get anything to the second year. You might get some cones, but it's not going to be uh, anything would be considered a crop. Um, so don't get discouraged at all. If you're don't get discouraged. Today. Don't discour get discouraged if uh, all you have is, is foliage growth. Um, you might not get no cones the first year. Uh, as, long as, as long as the plant has what it needs, whether it's water, sunlight, or nutrients, uh, the plant's going to do what it does and you should end up getting hop cones eventually whether it's year two or year three um and just all you can do is be patient mother nature is going to decide when you get what you get so mm -hmm. so if someone's seeing a little bit of growth but not you know rising really high is that something to be concerned about so the first year you won't see uh huge growth uh i mean it feels and and even we have it out here where where you'll see it stall. Usually, you know, plants grow really fast. I mean, you figure 18 feet in over three months is crazy growth. But sometimes you'll be, you'll, we check our fields every day. And so sometimes you'll go two weeks without seeing what you feel like any movement at all. And all of a sudden mm -hmm. you'll get a huge jump. So it mm -hmm. just depends. A weather is such a big thing. You know, if it's too hot, it's not good. If it's too cold, it's not good. And you know, we have weather swings here just like everybody else does. And so it just depends just depends i mean all you do is keep trying uh i know that at the end at the end of the day you're gonna have the satisfaction that you started with nothing and one day you're gonna get a product that you're able to use in your beer or in your pillows or your sleepy time tea whatever <laughs> wow. whatever it is that you decide to use it for i want to listen to that mantra every night before bed <laughs> really is that, that really nice. yeah. is that the way it works out yeah that sounds really nice <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of life advice right there yeah. from yeah. Virginia Lopez. Yeah. <laughs> so when you were talking about nutrients is there anything that um we should be putting on the rhizomes to help grow uh, on rhizomes no uh no i mean we 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 obviously give what our plant needs and you know we're testing our soil and we're testing our plants and sometimes they need nitrogen sometimes they need potash sometimes they need you know calcium whatever whatever we need we i mean we're a commercial farm so it's a little bit different than it is for you at home but i'm sure that you can find ways to test your soil or test your plants and to see if you're missing something you could also i mean there's certain fertilizers that are all in one you know where it's lot or you can get a slow release fertilizer where it's doing it slowly so you don't worry about over fertilizing at once like i said it doesn't it doesn't always work out yeah you, I mean, we've had plants almost to the string that die. And we don't know why. And we do just like everybody else does is we pull them out and start over. And hope, hope for a better year. Yakima's got pretty good dirt, so I'd assume that we we get luckier than most people. Yeah, so the soil soil, soil is definitely a, a big thing. Uh, definitely where we're at is another thing. The amount of sunlight we get, the, our day lengths we get, the cold in the winter is a very important thing. Um, you want your plant to go dormant for a certain amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, we're 
we're in the what are the Goldilocks area for growing mm -hmm. hops, definitely. Um, and not everybody's gonna be as lucky, but you know, terroir might be a big thing. You know, your hops might smell different than mine. They might do something different to your beer than mine. Mm -hmm. you Even know. like yeah, lot to lot differences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. field to field. Yeah. Uh, Picking date to picking date, right? You know, farm to farm, it, uh, you get differences, and so, so I mean, someone that's running hops in Florida might be completely different than someone in Washington. So, mm -hmm. just depends, and you won't know till you at least try. When we get our rhizomes, it all depends upon how the weather is in the Acma Valley. Can you talk about um, when you dig up your rhizomes and what you're looking for when you dig them up? So we we tend to try to start digging rhizomes or. February is when we try to start digging rhizomes. The problem is is that the weather doesn't always comply with what we want. Mm -hmm. So for example, I mean a week and a half ago we had snow on the ground and then we had then we had mud on the ground. Mm -hmm. And so the reason we started digging roots now is because it's dry enough where we can get out here and actually start digging and it actually makes it easier if you wait a little bit longer to dig them out because you can actually see stuff that's growing so that you can make sure that everything you're giving to the customer is quality and so just year to year is gonna be different some years i might be able to get rhizomes out a lot earlier some years it's gonna be later um some years you have uh different issues whether uh health issues where people can't come to work you know for certain different reasons so every year is gonna be different i mean Yagma hops just has to wait for the farmer to be ready to <laughs> take the rhizomes basically at the end of the yeah. day yeah, yeah, yeah. and how long does it take you guys to harvest the rhizome uh so the amount of rhizomes that go to you guys it does not take us very long so um yesterday we did our centennial crop and i used uh three women to dig my rhizomes in uh in three and a half hours they had all the rhizomes that yakima hops needed of that variety for the year did so. you hear that all all women that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's crazy it's awesome yeah. Yeah, most, most of the people that dig rhizomes for us are, are women. Um, and why is that? Um, multiple reasons. Um, one is there a lot of them, not all, a lot of them are a lot more meticulous than some, some of the men. Um, and then if I ask them, if I explain to them where my rhizomes are going, that they're going to go to customers all around the world and explain to them that they want equality, they always make sure that the crop that I'm getting from them is going to be the best that I can get, and mm -hmm. so that, that's the reason. And that's the reason why I use those three women more than anyone else, because they've proven over the years that they're the product that they gave me is better. The pros, yeah, the pros. <laughs> they're, they're, they are pros. Leave it to the pros. Sweet. Yeah, I mean they're able to they're able to dig uh, 1,500 rhizomes, each one of them in three and a half hours. I mean, that's wow, definitely pro. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. yeah. yeah and, and it just depends on variety. They are in a variety that produce lots of rhizomes. Not all varieties produce a lot. Is it pretty labor intensive? It's like just as far as getting them out. Uh, yeah. So it all, all depends on the variety. Um, in this field here where we're at right now, uh, there's a lot of rhizomes, so it doesn't take very much. You start pulling on on some dead vines, and you'll start popping rhizomes up. Um, there's a little bit of digging, a lot of bit of cutting. The most intensive part is counting, counting and uh, tying. Mm -hmm. um, making bundles of 50 and having to tie them off it's definitely takes time but um is there yeah. a certain length that's uh best to plant in the ground versus planting in a pot are they the same length or? so so six inches is what we cut them at it's what you guys get them get them at um for us in the ground it's what's worked the best in a pot i mean if you have a pot that's six inches tall then yeah you can go ahead and use your six inch tall rhizome uh, if you have a smaller pot then obviously you don't want part of your rhizome sticking out because that part's just going to die. So, I mean, you can trim it, make it smaller. You might even be able to cut it in half and, and plant two pieces in the same pot. Um, it just depends on, on what you, you decide you want to do. Um, and it's all going to be trial and error. I mean, what works for me might not work for you. And you just have to try something different and hopefully it'll, you know, you figure out what works. I mean, people have been growing here hops a long time and so they kind of have it down on what works for this area. Mm -hmm. It's not the same case everywhere else, so you just gotta sure. figure it out. Do you want this soil to dry out com completely before you start watering again, or is some moisture in that soil okay? Yeah, no. So, so the way the way the way uh, I always think about it, it's uh, if if it's too dry, the plant stresses out. If it's too wet, the plant stresses out. You want a happy medium. You want it to have a chance to air out a little bit, but not all the way. It's 
it's like the difference of not getting any water to getting shoved in a river i guess is a good way to look at it you know you want to be able to get your glasses of water you know every so often when you need it it's the same concept basically you want to make sure that your your ground doesn't dry out completely and you want to make sure that it's not sopping wet because your plant will rot mm -hmm. or you'll get other diseases mm -hmm. from your plant for sure so there's a good way to check for that like the good old thumb press or so um I, we use moisture probes now um but we've always done shovel tests where you dig down uh depending on where your uh, root level is and you dig down and you check moisture by squishing it i mean you want it to clump up but mm -hmm. not to be muddy gotcha. uh that's the way we look at it and and we go that route but once again i mean soil soil is so such a huge factor i mean if you have sandy sand uh, it might be different than if you have gravel. I mean, if you have gravel, you're going to be watering a lot more often with shorter bursts. Uh, if you have clay, you know, it's going to be different also. Sandy loam. It just it just depends on your area. And, and so you just trial and error. And if it doesn't work out one way, try it a different way. That's why I sell you guys uh, hop rhizomes and bundle of three now, right? So you have three chances to... Yep. Mm -hmm. To, to get a plant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that really works out. Cool. Very cool. Um, something, a question that we got the other day was, um, is it okay to plant rhizomes of different varieties in the same row, which I know is cool, but maybe we could talk about about that. Do you mean like planting a centennial with a cascade? Like, well, centennial, you have a bundle of three centennial, and then like, you know, five feet away, you have a bundle of comet. Uh, oh. You shouldn't have any issues with that, as long as you have a label and you know which which is which, so that if you're looking for something that Santana's gonna do to your beer, you get Centennial and you don't end up with Cascades instead, you know? For sure. Uh, but yeah, besides that, it, it shouldn't be an issue. The other thing is if, if uh, where you get your rhizomes, it's, it's the cold. The way we store our rhizomes here on the farm is we put them in a bin, um, we, cover them up, we cover them up with a burlap and we water them every day till it's time to actually plant them. Uh, I know that some of you guys might put them in like cold storage or fridges or whatever and I'm guessing you guys keep them between 40 to 50 degrees mm -hmm. is what I'm kind of guessing. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing you can do. Don't don't plant too early, but if you plant too late, you're not going to see any real growth that first year. Uh, rule of thumb here is we're training around May 5th. Um, if you're not training till May 5th, you don't have to have string in till May 5th, really. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So it just depends on when you're going to be training, when you have to actually have twine in. Um, the way, it's the way it works out. We do it here because we have a certain amount of acres that we have to get through in a certain amount of time and, and you start earlier and go from there. All right, well, thank you so much, Loza, for showing us how it's done and uh, educating us. Yeah, yeah. Man. I guess we'll yeah. see you in May when we're ready to start doing all the training and stuff. Sounds great, man. See you guys then. Cool, appreciate Thanks. it. Yeah, appreciate you guys coming out. Hey, one more time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Glad you did it, Thumpy. <laughs> <laughs>